Hi guys, I'm Tom Moore. I'm one of the founders of Cartoon Saloon. And uh, it's great to meet you in person. Can I ask you all about what are you most proud of? You guys, what are you most proud of? Um, I'm very proud of that. There was a little idea that popped into my head 11 years ago and it brought me to so many talented people and uh, together we, we formed this film and now it's it's done. It was an awesome ride for everybody. At some point you're high, at some point you're down, at some point you just wanted to stop. When you come to the university in the morning and everybody else is, is there and uh, giving their best and there's a new puppet or a new piece of music, a new set, it's just amazing and it keeps you going and going and going. With the year, what are you most proud of in Sen's Tears? I think with this film we had uh, a strong story to tell and one of the things that is really cool is that when we go to festivals or when we talk about the film with anyone, they are like um, telling us that they didn't know about it and they tried their best to see what it was, to search on Google and find out what mm -hmm. happened. Great. So it's Yeah, me too actually. It was informative for me about that bit of it. And I have uh, one uh, memory from a festival when we, we showed the film. And at the end, there is a guy which was a giant and um, he came to us and just told us thank you. Oh. It was really, really powerful because it was really a great honor for us. I don't know, it felt special. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And what are you most proud of? Like? Um, what am I most proud of? Uh, I, so my film's very bizarre that it is kind of its own behind the scenes. So I think I'm proud of like, that I'll be able to look back on it like <laughs> in, in like five See years. what you did at your lockdown time. Yeah, yeah. I think that's nice. And any reactions to your movie that surprised you? Did anybody say something that you didn't expect them to say? Or? I'm I'm just surprised that it's that it's that it worked as a film. But <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you most proud of in your in your movie? I think this is my first personal film. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, where it's not just my own story, but it's also using my voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the story itself is about learning how to trust your own mind and trust your own voice. Yeah. Even. Which is huge for everyone I to get every stage in life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful thing to put into the world. It's cool. Yeah. My advice is keep moving, keep moving and don't look back too much and think too much because you'll get paralyzed, you know. We started our studio when we were in college too and um, I'd been a member of Young Irish Filmmakers in Kilkenny and they gave us space to get our first movie started and by the time we got it made, it was like 10 years. And then, yeah, there's a scary moment because you're like, oh, like, can I do it again? <laughs> like, you know, it's that. So my advice is always to get started on the next one as soon as possible. Don't let that pressure build up for too long. Like if you're already start, it's like chain smoking, you know, <laughs> you have to light the next one up to put in a previous one. You, when you made Like a Nemo, how did you think about the characters when you first started designing the characters? How did you go about it? Did you make them or did you draw them? Um, well, I, I had come up with the idea um, in 2011 and uh, I saw a t-shirt with a deep sea diver and, a, um, and an astronaut on a, on a seesaw. Then uh, years later at university, I met uh, Sebastian and um, I had some ideas for the characters and he put it into these beautiful designs. What made you choose stop motion for this movie rather than any other stage? But for me, um, for example, it was a magical moment. We animate this uh, in the set and then I hit the play button and then you see this, uh, this is live. For the Sense Tears, you seem to have a slightly stop motion feel to your character design. How did you approach the character design at the beginning? We knew that we had a, a story and a subject that was a little bit tough, so we wanted to uh, search in this stop motion aspect. It's more easy like, to watch, I imagine. And we really liked it, so we were uh, trying to get influences from the stop motion, of course, like for example, My Life on Zucchini. Oh, uh, yeah, My Life on Zucchini was great, yeah. Did you design the characters by actually modeling in 3D, or did you draw, or did you go well, straight we to the computer? went straight in 3D. We had to find some solutions to have a big crowd with a few amounts of right. assets. So we tried to go with this style of the characters that could swap the assets, like the nose, the moustache, the, the eyes and everything. Question everything, young man. The world is not quite what it seems. Tell me a little bit about the design process of the ostrich. Yeah, so for me, like some for some reason at the start, like I, I'm thinking about design, but I'm also thinking about how big they're going to be in the real world. So for this film, like I'm, I made them smaller than than I previously did, like about, okay. about this big. 
Yeah. And then like made the head bigger and, and... I guess that's important, is it? Like to decide the size because it's going to dictate the detail of the... the detail movie, and the then the scale of the textures and materials that you're using yeah. will look differently at, at different scales that you're using. So yeah, it's a very important thing. Yeah. It changes the whole look depending on how and big it is. I guess your sitting room was a no-go area where everything was set up. Like, oh yeah, for, like somebody for 10 off, months, yeah. Somebody knocked something over or something. <laughs> Yeah, and because there was two cameras, there's one camera shooting a monitor and then another camera, there's like this like dead zone that you can't go anywhere near. Like, wow. And so, yeah. wow. So you shot it all in your sitting room? Yeah. When I was really young, like, like before I started going to school, I used to have nightmares. How about you, Olivia? Is your, your technique different? Um, Do you storyboard <laughs> it at all? or? It was honestly a lot more fluid. So... I knew I wanted to make this film about lucid dreaming. I had had like all these amazing experiences during the pandemic about it. Did you storyboard then or start to make sketches or did you go straight to the AI and say, give me some ideas, animatron? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call the AI. The way that the tech works best is when you put your own images into it. So you're kind of able to imprint your own style. Amazing, isn't it? It's fascinating. You seriously, heartfelt congratulations to all of it. It's amazing. I think everybody's excited to see what y'all do next.